so the point of this talk is basically just to explain how to do the basics of how to building your own IoT solutions. My IoT solution I'm going to talk about is here. It's this ugly box with Raspberry Pi, antenna, and a Chinese sensor next to it. And the point is to a bit explain how to start and where to even look for things for, all the, uh, for IoT, right? So uh, why? Why do this? Why did even I start spending all this time even though I'm doing Android and my day job? Well, the problem is I kind of had me and Vana kind of had a humidity problem in our house, and there was this moldy, ugly things which are apparently not all that good for your health. And the thing was, everyone just said, well, open your windows when it's too humid inside, um, and everything's going to be okay. And of course, the geek in me said, well, so how do I know when it's humid enough? And everyone was just like, well, you smell that. I didn't. Um, so I decided to build my own solution. Um, and first of all, because I'm lazy, I wanted to order this on Amazon. Uh, there was this thing about you had cube sensors and they cost 300 euros for five rooms. It was expensive, so that didn't go. Then I looked through all the sites and everything was kind of pretty expensive. I mean, even this Xiaomi thing is like 15 bucks, but I would need four of them, each for one room and a control unit which did, was not sold in European Union and it was kind of questionable if it even would get enough power or it would work. And that was a bit of a problem, right? Also like these sensors, it's like this was $150 for a single sensor and as I said, I need five of them. That's kind of expensive. So, well, let's do it. I, let's just do it. How hard can it be? I mean, seriously, right? So, step one. You get the hardware. You kind of need the actual hardware to collect data and store it. Um, if you want to make a, a bit more distributed system, you're going to need a box that's going to collect and store all the data. In my case, temperature and humidity around the house. Then you're going to need the actual sensors. For me, it was humidity, temperature, you can have whatever. And then you need to find a way how to get data from sensors to the actual box that collects data. I mean, honestly, you probably won't take all the Ethernet cables to all those small sensors and have all the mess around your house, right? So those are the three things that need to be solved. Um, in my case, I had a Raspberry Pi. This was something that was lying around in my house. Uh, it's actually a pretty nice device. It's really well supported. It's decently cheap and you can get hardware. This is it. I actually had a screen available as well, which currently isn't used. And I had Wi-Fi because I really don't want to deal with cables. So this, was my, this is my collection box. This is where all the data is going to come in, which is going to store all the historical data, right? Then you actually need to measure things. And that's where the things get complicated, right? Um, you can get a bunch of these cheap sensors, see they're like $5 a piece, but they're just sensors, they need to be soldiered somewhere. So I would have to buy an Arduino chip that has Wi-Fi, then I would have to add a power supply to it, I would have to buy five of them, and I would have to soldier everything together. And the problem is I'm really bad at soldiering. I mean, last time I tried, it was, you know, uh, it involved uh, medical uh, help and things like that. And that's, that's usually not a good idea, right? So, uh, the, uh, of course, even the cost of these things, like the simple Bluetooth Wi-Fi module for Arduino, uh, can quickly cost like a 10 bucks and then it's five bucks for sensors, then soldering, then it's batteries. And again, we're like at 30 euros per each sensor. And I need, again, four of them, making it kind of expensive. So, um, that wasn't an option because also the other thing I don't like is like, you know, a mess. And if I would soldier the sensors around, I would have this, a mess like this lying in every room of my house, plugged somewhere in the wall, you know, the visitors would come in, they would say, well, you live like, I don't know, uh, a weird person, so I'm, we're not going to visit you anymore. So um, I kind of wanted also to have a box. I could 3D print it. But again, I'm really bad with physical things. So that was not an option. But then, well, there's this place in the world that builds everything, right? And it's kind of cheap. So, well, 
and I was looking through, through AliExpress, which is this nice Chinese website that has all the things that are going to burn down your house, really cheap <laughs> and with no postage. Um, and then I found this. And someone was selling, like for 40 years you got, well, this, this I bought it threw away. I don't need that. Uh, I kind of was more interested in these parts. <laughs> Four perfectly packaged sensors with battery supply, everything programmed, built in low power mode. Um, and the thing about the low power mode is if you don't program your Arduino right, if you're doing it yourself, it's going to die after a month. You're going to be keep, keep swapping batteries. But these nice, friendly Chinese people already program their boxes in a way that they actually work for months. They can be put outside. They, they work between minus 10 and plus 40. So you can actually throw them outside and still measure the temperature. It's pretty great. And they literally, it cost me uh, 10 euros per piece to get these sensors, completely boxed with batteries, with everything. I just had to throw away the weather station because I didn't need it. Um, the important part here is this. Um, it uses the 413 megahertz band to transmit data. It's not using Wi-Fi, it's not using Zigbee, it's using 433 megahertz bro broadcast, which is very standard. It's what you use when you have your, you know, when you enter the parking lot and you press the remote, that's 432 megahertz. Uh, if you have an older car and you press the button, it's going to be 433 megahertz. Uh, all those really low powered wireless things work on this band. And the good thing about this is because everything's so cheap, everything's so low power, it can be easily read, right? So then we get to this part. So now we have the sensors and now we have a box to collect it. So how are we going to collect that data? Well, there's this really cool thing I got reminded of by uh, Tomas and a few that had a talk about how to analyze these kind of uh, signals. It's called software defined radio. It's this really neat chip. You actually plug into your computer and just say, hey, collect data from this frequency and it's just going to tune in. Uh, to that frequency and start reading the data from whatever you want, right? So this box, as you see, it's a USB key that costs 23 uh, euros. And it's plugged in here and comes with this neat little antenna and can do a lot of things. It actually comes with a remote so you can watch DVB-T TV. It receives TV, it receives radio, it receives all the basic signals you can think of. So all you have to do, the keyword is this chip, which is natively supported in Linux. You plug it in, it just works. Um, and it's just going to collect data from you know, your neighbor's uh, parking lot opening uh, remotes. It's going to collect data from all your neighbor's sensors. It's going to collect data from all your neighbor's car keys. Um, it's, it's a really neat, really, really neat device. Um, so this is how it looks plugged in. Um, OK, so right. So now we have all the hardware. This is pretty much everything we needed. Um, though the fun part, the software, because you know I didn't want to deal with hardware. Uh, this is kind of slow. Chinese. Yeah, Chinese. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, sorry. Does it work on 433 megahertz? Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. The fun part about these sensors is obviously they're not documented. You're not going to find them in a box. And if I'm going to open this up, I'm probably not going to see a actual uh, chip number or anything. So uh, it's essentially a completely binary unknown protocol. It sends something and you can actually open it in an app and you see a burst of data and it's like 66946. Now, some of this may be temperature, some of this might be checksum. It's not really that logical and they send a lot of data. So this was my concern. Just how much time am I going to spend reverse engineering these things to figure out what data they're sending? Especially because if those listings on AliExpress don't actually list the type of chips they use or the protocol. So if you buy like six different ones, they might use different protocols. So that was annoying. I was just like, well, I'm going to buy it. I'm just going to throw everything away if it's not going to work. But then I found this. This is this, an open source project where someone had the exact same problem I had and built a small Linux tool that can use those RTL uh, chips, uh, SDR chips to collect data and parse it. 
and it has, I think, like 90 or 100 different protocols supported inside that it parses automatically. So when you run it, this is what you get. It's probably not visible that in projector, but it says, I ran it in my house and it just said, oh, tuning to 433 megahertz, oh, I have data. Nexus temperature, humidity sensor, house code 94, battery OK, channel 2, 20 degrees, 38 humidity, prolog sensor, and so on, so on. Um, the fun part about this is this spring-free temperature sen and moisture sensor that sends 102 degrees Celsius, well, I have no idea where it is. I'm kind of receiving it at my house. <laughs> um, but yeah. So for the software itself, um, I kind of tried to keep it as simple as possible because I didn't want to deal with it too much. So I took the Raspberry Pi and I wanted to make the minimal amount of software required, right? So uh, I took a small Python script that runs this RTL 43, which also has a nice side effect. It can export this data I've shown in the previous picture as JSON. So it's easy, you just run it, just decode the JSON and you have all the data. So I have a small daemon that collects this data and stores it into a SQLite database on the device itself. Uh, and then I have another small Python script that basically serves the web interface so I can see the actual data displayed, right? Um, the software itself, I installed DietP, uh, which is a distribution of Debian built for Raspberry Pi. It's really great. It has a nice updater, a nice daemon that's optimized for Raspberry Pis. Um, I kind of like it. Um, then I installed Python 3x on it. I think it's Python 3.4, but don't hold my word for it. And then I just needed a way to store data. PV is a really nice little ORM for Python. I mean, nothing stopping you from using Django or whatever big things, but you know, I tried to keep it simple and small. Uh, took the Flask web framework to serve the data. And as I said, I'm storing to SQLite because I was too lazy to configure PostgreSQL on the device itself. So it works. Uh, and if you, you can see all the source is here on GitHub. I think the slides are going to be available so you can click on it and see how uh, ugly my code is. Um, but yeah, there's this small daemon that basically runs automatically when Raspberry Pi starts. It starts this process, it reads the input, and the hardest part this thing does is takes that host number and sensor code and maps it to living room, to bedroom. Right now it's hard coded because, well, why would I bother? It's like I have six sensors, I can just change it. Um, and then there's this little server D Python that basically exposes just to JSON endpoints. One is going to serve the current temperatures, battery status of servers, the last thing it, see, it has seen, and, it and the other is uh, it returns data grouped by hours, so we can use it to render the graph. Chinese. Um, and for the UI itself, um, I'm really bad at JavaScript, so I kind of downloaded random JavaScript libraries from the web. Uh, one of them worked, so that was Plotly. Um, and there was someone created this really nice CSS, dashboard CSS, which was made for building dashboards. So I just added, dashboard, uh, added that CSS set, put a box on the laptop, and it just worked. I mean, <laughs> mother web development is way easier than C++, I tell you. Um, and this is how it looks like. Uh, if you open the web page on my Raspberry Pi, it's going to show, you know, bedroom right now is 17 degrees, it has this humidity, living room, office. As you can see, uh, unfortunately, that weather station, those four sensors, right, one of them doesn't report humidity. And they never told me that. And the actual LCD display doesn't show that at all, so it's by design. So, well, office, pff, and right now has no, maybe I'm going to order a new set eventually. Um, but this is it. But yeah, this is, uh, this is a graph. The yellow part is the humidity, the blue part is the temperature, uh, and as you can see, if you open a window, then it suddenly drops down. And the next step would probably be adding uh, some alerts or emails or something to say, oh my god, there's like a huge uh, jungle environment inside your living room. Open the windows for crying out loud, right? Um, so yeah. This is pretty much it. As I said, the source is available here. If you want to know how it looks like, just click on it. It's Python, really easy. Um, so what's left? <laughs> you waited for this one, right? Um, about the security, uh, if you have noticed, 
These sensors are broadcasting their temperature. And the cool thing about 433 MHz band is it really goes far with low power. I mean, outside, 30 meters is not weird. Inside, it's going to go through all the walls, 6 meters more without problem. So we are basically broadcasting your temper house temperature to all your neighbors, whoever wants to care for it. Um, that's usually not a problem because it's just temperature. It's not like, I don't know, they're, they're going to steal your meat from a freezer because they know it's minus five, but, <laughs> right? Um, the other part that I kind of happened was when I tried to prepare for this talk, I logged into my Raspberry Pi. All the binaries started to turn in garbage. And the thing is, these first generation raspberries are really sensitive to the power supply. If they don't have enough power, they can easily crash and don't work stably. And this one has a Wi-Fi chip and a receiver chip and a display on it, so it's really, really running close to the, um, to the limit. And it tanked me by corrupting the SD card and losing all my data. Um, so that was maybe not the best idea. Uh, my next step was to actually store the temperature data on my NAS. So basically, the, the ORM now connects to Postgres server running on another machine. So I don't lose data when this thing decides to die on me again. Um, also do backups if you want to keep data. I mean, it's just living room temperature. So I'm not really sad about it. But you know, <laughs> if you need to, if you're bound by law to keep that data, it kind, it's kind of make get more reliable storage. Um, yeah, I already talked about this. Uh, one of the sensors in the package didn't support humidity, so that was kind of funny. Uh, and the last point was, you know when I was complaining when I've seen all those solutions costing like 300 euros? Well, if I tally all the hardware parts together, turns out it was like 250 euros anyway. So now I just invested a lot of time to build a solution that costs the same. And it kind of works slightly better, though. Uh, it's a bit more secure than most, because it's not connected to the cloud. Um, but still, it wasn't really as cheap as I expected. Uh, and the things I didn't get around to yet is um, actually building the user interface for the screen. Uh, I've had a plan to basically show the current temperature and humidity on it. I just didn't have time. A uh, solution, simple solution would be to just install you know, Firefox on it and show that user interface or just special index or HTML interface on it. Uh, I wanted to do it in Qt because I like tiny software and I'm not, I don't enjoy JavaScript. Um, but that's also an option. And yeah, getting better data backup systems so I don't keep losing data. And maybe even save the actual image because reinstalling all the tools on the Raspberry Pi took a long time because it's a slow thing. Um, so this is a question mark. Uh, apparently, uh, I'm not allowed to uh, basically answer questions. So uh, ignore this question mark, even though we still have three minutes. If you repeat them, then you can have okay. a minute question. Okay, first, would anyone like to ask, uh, ask some kind of question? How often does it send the, the data? Is it every minute, every hour? Uh, so how often does it send the data? Uh, it's like the sensors themselves, I've seen the intervals they're preset is about 10 to 20 seconds are the data bursts. Uh, so this is about how often do we get. They're not really real time, but they're really good enough for all of these users. <coughs> yeah? Did you, did you manage to fetch anything from the neighbors? If, you man if I managed to fetch anything from neighbors, well, the, that's, that was the only sensor I got. But honestly, I didn't run the analysis and grabbing process for the radio. So I would probably get all of their you know, garage openings and stuff like that. I mean, those are technically secure. Most of the time, so I couldn't really get in. So it's not really, it's, but you know, still security. Um, yeah? Uh, the accuracy of the sensors, I'm interested in because there are a lot of uh, um, PHE and other versions. And, um, yeah, uh, so the accuracy of the sensors, it's a uh, they're cheap Chinese sensors. Uh, they're, I mean, they're somewhere in the ballpark, but it's really not uncommon to. Uh, I had them all, all three next uh, one by the next one, and they showed like two degrees difference and 10% difference in humidity. So <laughs> <laughs> please don't keep anything important with these sensors. Buy something quality wise, right? Um, so yeah, um, my time is my time is up.
if you have anything else to ask me, if you need more information, find me. I'm going to be around. Happy to talk about all the stuff I brought. <laughs>